And we're here. Hello, everyone. It's me, Ash. I'm your host and GM. We're here to play Dungeon World. We're playing Splintering Wheel Dungeon World. Um, uh, I'm going to be your GM today. Um, and we're going to go into the, uh, the, the Splintering Wheels forests from, from our little town of Beta. And with me, I have three lovely adventurers who I will get to do some introductions. You have, you have four of them even. You have even more than you thought. Oh yeah, I guess you're lovely too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I can count. I'm real good at this. Um, Emily, do you want to do your introductions? Sure. Hi, I am Emily. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am an artist and a filmmaker. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Blackwall Says. Um, and today I am playing Bao. Uh, and Bao is a shaman. Bao remembers having been alive for a few years. Bao is curious about most things, and Bao loves what Horu has done with the place. <laughs> Excellent, cool. <laughs> um, Sarah, how are you going? Hello, I'm Sarah, pronouns are she, her. I'm playing Sketch. Oh, I didn't talk about me. I'm good at this. Um, <laughs> I'm a like, creative generalist person. I mainly do writing. And I'm PH Dancer's teapot on most things where you can see my writing and other arty stuff. I'm playing Sketch, um, who is a spy, but don't use that word because they don't like it. Um, they like to wear other people's faces and they really like Sean. Cool. Awesome. Uh, next up, we have Jane. Hi, Jane. Hello, hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this is my very first stream um, game, so this is a big first for me. Um, I am a PhD student um, doing uh, writing a PhD in game design and psychology. And um, you can find me on Twitter at Jotosha. And today I'm playing a character, a mage called Air. Uh, I, I actually don't know how to properly pronounce my character's name, but let's just go with Air. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, it's Icelandic, Nordic uh, uh, tradition, um, Elvish. Uh, this character has short, flicky, grey-white hair and very bright eyes. Um, she is has an androgynous appearance and uh, her goal is to aid everyone else around her um but she's got an interesting and bit of a secret past so yeah mysterious. always always got to have a mysterious past yeah, of that, course. yeah of course. it's required um yeah. boo, 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 boo. um next up we have heather hi heather hello i'm heather or short shrub on places um i don't do much except make poor life decisions about when to go to bed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't look at my timestamps for when I was on Twitter this morning. Um, anyway, I will be playing Folland, uh, who is an immolator and salamander and who mainly tries their best but really has the skill of setting things on fire and not much else. Um, so it's going to be fun. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> well, yeah. if we if we're all if we have a an understanding of of who we are, then we need to know where we're at. So, um, yeah, I think we we see Beta um f uh from above, and we uh, um we see it as like a a, a speck or a smudge or a mark on the uh, on the the great green expanse the uh, uh, green and brown and like little specks of black and then we see this weird smudge of stone um and we see uh we see cliffs rising out and things like that and then we see um ruined buildings in amongst in amongst the uh the uh, ancient jungles and things and um and we entering on the town um, and we see that the uh, the town today seems to be um, very quiet. I think um, I think there are people like occasionally peeking out of their uh, out of their homes, and um, and then like 
going to visit each other but being very quick and and sub, uh, and subtle about it trying not to uh, trying not to stay outside as much as possible um uh, um and yeah pe people are a bit spooked at the moment um but uh yeah we we come into town we see the the cobbles um and things and yeah i think we we hear the sound of like thing something like a uh uh, a tumbleweed or similar like just rolling through the town on its own um does anyone know where we find them does anyone need to do any um any moves for the start of session um does that include downtime stuff yep, yep. Mm. um i would love to do a downtime action mm -hmm. um uh, so at for Jane's benefit, have we told Jane let, about? Let, let's 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 go speech. through. Um, seeing as seeing as we're doing it, let's do let's let's read out the move start of session. Um, blah, 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 blah. introduce your characters, which we've done. If any characters have been working on any long term projects around the town, make the lending a hand move. Um, if any characters want to go hunting for rumors, make the gather rumors move. Then, with rumors or not, choose destination and set out. Don't dally. So, does anyone has anyone been helping out around town that they want to um, list? So, this is uh, when you spend time in town um, and help to develop an improvement while other adventures set, uh, adventures set forth. So, this is specifically for people who've had a character that was that has been in adventures previously but wasn't in last adventure. Mm. Mm. Yes, so, um, you could have been doing something. Is there anything? Yeah. Else? I, I would love to not do anything then, because <laughs> I'm. Mm. I was in last week's, mm -hmm. and there may be a lizard folk prisoner somewhere in town. Oh no! Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, and the uh, the strange keeping of many prisoners begins. I remember this from mm -hmm. the last round. <laughs> oh my god. Um uh okay so yeah i would love to do a helping action um, sure i have been working on the uh, apothecary mm -hmm. and i think i'll just keep doing that um because sure. i think that's something that bow is like pretty involved with mm -hmm. um so mostly uh what she's been doing is like helping with um acquiring stock Mm -hmm. uh, and sorting stock mm -hmm. so like that means going out into the forest and finding a bunch of stuff and bringing it back and working out which bits have magical useful healing properties and which bits don't i have this image in my head of like bow going out into the forest and then coming back with like i found a dead possum is this useful and, absolutely. Then, and, and then being like oh, i guess so that's absolutely <laughs> what it is she just comes back with just like a bunch of weird shit like that i found some bones i found <laughs> yeah, this check this, out all these bottle caps dead animal yeah. yeah i found all these bottle caps yeah. i found some strange mushrooms awesome yeah cool well um yeah. then say how you help what you've done and roll plus fortunes which is currently plus three so we're doing pretty well wow we are doing well Okay. Don't um, fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just go roll slash roll 2d6 plus plus three. Okay. Well, I didn't quite fuck it up. I almost fucked it up, yeah. but um, not quite. So if it's a seven to nine, that's partial success. What do yeah. I so choose one? Uh, on a seven to nine, choose one. You make healthy headway, but the going is tough and it takes its toll. Mark one progress towards the improvement and gain a debility. Or the project is delayed due to disturbances in town. The GM will give you a reliable rumor. Ooh, mm, that's a mm, that is a tricky choice. Um. Hmm. It's especially tricky because uh, this character has terrible uh, charisma, so I'm not going to be very good at contributing to rumours in <laughs> other ways. Um, so it is tempting to take it, but on the other hand, I'm only two sections away from completing the apothecary clock, so... Oh, that's really tough. What do people think? Do you think I should get a reliable rumour or nearly complete the apothecary? Well... 
because I know how to make a poison, I might have an interest in helping out the apothecary as well, if that makes a difference. Oh, in which case we could potentially finish it. Mm. Oh. I mean, we in the journals, we do have quite a few different rumours. Yeah, we do. Yes. We have quite a lot so already. it's not necessarily... Mm. It's not a short. Like, well, we won't have anything to do. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the debility. Mm -hmm. uh, I do. I get to choose which one I take. Yep. Um. So that's at the. That's at. It, um. Uh. Just after the characters section in the rules. In the yep. rules doc. So that's weakened, grumpy, shaky, muddled, sluggish, or distracted. Hmm. I'm gonna say that i am what's the constitution one uh that's shaky no that's well that should be dexterity dexterity should be dexterity shaky. is sluggish oh that's confusing because <laughs> the what the, the the actual sheet one is shaky for dexterity oh yeah this yeah right um in fact, actually, I'm going to take that one. I'm just going to take the dexterity yep. one. Sure. So mine, minus one to my dexterity for this. Yep. And it's until I camp and get the option to recover. One of the options in a successful camp move is um, is okay. to expend a resource that would help you recover mm -hmm. it. So you'd want something that would help you with that. Okay. All right. I'll keep an eye out for it. In the meantime, yeah, I think basically... Um, uh, I think one of the things that I collected was a bunch of nettles and I just got <laughs> stung and so my fingers are all like sore and like prickly and I'm fine. I like the idea that like we can see through your mask that like somehow you've got like puffy face from this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, oh yeah, should we do like... Yeah, what do you what do you look like in your, yeah. in your action, right? Like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, so I think we see Bao coming out of the forest uh, back like into town and to the apothecary um, and yeah she's carrying sort of like baskets and armfuls of things and she's got like a shoulder bag slung over uh, one shoulder that's stuffed full of leaves and stuff um, and she is um, quite short and part of that is like uh, that she has a very sort of hunched posture um, she always seems to be kind of like leaning forward and hurrying um, and uh, she wears um, a kind of mishmash outfit of like uh, bits of like uh, leather and skins and um, things like that. Um, she has uh, a, a big amount of hair that is in like little kind of like braids um, uh, and a few like kind of dreadlocks that have like beads and things on the ends. Um, she wears a mask most of the time which is um, wooden uh, and carved in the shape of like a beetle face with mandibles kind of down sitting next to her jaw um, and through it you can see sort of these very bright intense curious eyes um, she also has uh, a lot of tattoos over most of her body um, the most obvious ones are on her hands where her fingers have been tattooed um, pretty much entirely black at the tips um, so yeah she's comes in and sort of uh, takes this big load of things uh, to the apothecary and kind of sets it out on the floor in a rather in the way and annoying fashion um, to, to sort through it. Cool. Awesome. Well, if you want to right click on that thing and then go to like uh, choose side, I think it is, you can tick it up to five out of six um, dot, dots, spots, token thing what's the word i want slices slices, slices, slices. is the word i i couldn't yeah. remember the word awesome cool. they're like pizza slices yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um cool um well if uh if the other person who wanted to do um a lending a hand downtime type thing was uh sarah do you want to do that now yeah sure <laughs> i feel like a, a really good way to help given what bow is doing to help would be to like provide sorting assistance with these like when stuff comes in from various people <laughs> to like sort through it and work out what is actually useful for apothecary stuff and so i like i like, like the idea yeah, of like sketch being like, like no poisonous herbs this thing is just poison <laughs> 
Yeah, a hundred percent. What does Sketch look like um, as they're as they're doing this? Uh, most of their body is hidden in sort of big old sort of black cloak that's open at the front, um, and there you can just see kind of really simple, loose, um, like a beige sort of oh, calico top and black sort of floaty trousers. Um, Sketch's face is really hard to remember. Um, I guess they are quite pale um, and their eyes appear kind of gray and stuff. Given they're indoors, you would just see like pale faces, sort of gray eyes, quite nondescript. And they've got a hood over their hair. But if you catch glimpses of it, you would see that it's quite a bright white color. Mm. Cool. Um, yeah, well, if you're helping out with the apothecary, let's, let's roll plus fortune. So that's, that's 2d6 plus 3. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yay! Oh, wow. We did it! <laughs> Gosh. I think yeah. it says a lot about the characters that you've got in this town that the first thing that's completed is the apothecary. Apothecary, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so you, you, you're like, you're the one that is like, I think we've got everything we need. Um, oh, I have a question, yeah. Ash. Who is the person that works here? That's what I was going to mm. ask. Mm. Um, do you want me to give them, just like generate a random name for them? Yeah. Let's do that. Give us a random NPC that is someone, the person who works here. Someone roll me a d10. Sarah, do you want to do it? You finished the clock. <laughs> seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Laven. L-A-V-E-N. Oh, I like it. L-A-V-E-N? Yep. I like it. And I'll put them in the journal. Can someone please roll me... 2d100. Mm. Can I? Yeah. Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so in I the, don't in know the, how to roll though. Do I just the, type the, out so, what yeah. I see there? Rolling? So type, type slash and yeah. then roll and then space mm -hmm. and yeah. then 2d100 and hit enter. 2d100. Cool. 73 yeah. and 87. Let me find out. I'll tell you some things about this person. Um, so um this person is really uh takes very seriously the charge that they've been given um they the, the fact that they've been given the task is what makes it important to them that someone said hey you need to do this um and then um pronouns oh, for this person this person uses um I don't have a table for that. Um, let's use she, her pronouns. Sounds oh, good. Oh, this makes sense. This person is um, is the apothecary because they have a very strong resistance to poisons and things mm. and, and like bad things. And so they actually test a bunch of the stuff on themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so they so they will often be the, the be like you know like testing concoctions and things on themselves. Uh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense then. No wonder they got the <laughs> job. Case, um, Sketch is definitely going like, not sure if this is this thing or this thing. Um, <laughs> can you check? <laughs> yeah, and they're like, oh, that made my tummy sore. And you're like, okay, that would probably have killed most people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they are definitely, uh, they're, they're definitely, um, they're uh, a hirsute person um, with a kind of like, bearish features um so like yeah like like big pointy teeth especially in the like canine area mm. um and yeah um quite like uh quite heavy set um with with strong bones and and strong body i guess um cool so that means that now when you're in town you can purchase things from the apothecary yeah. We can actually use our money for something. Good job, team. Woo! Um, I can make really potions. Except I have no money, so. 
They no, cannot not. make <laughs> healing healing potions, but what they can make is um is uh, is uh, where is it gone? Um, poultices and herbs, bandages, um, and poisons. That's excellent. Poultices and herbs, bandages and poisons. Okay, Ooh, do I have any money? I could buy a thing with money. <laughs> Jane, for your reference, this is a very new concept. I, uh, I get it. I see this. <laughs> oh, and and pipe leaf. If you want halfling pipe leaf. Ah, oh, halfling pipe leaf. Oh, fantastic. Ooh. Yeah, no, I don't it's very money. good for making friends, and also means you all have to right, speak in yeah. an English accent. That's just I, that's I've just rules. decided that's the rule. I have coin. Ooh, I have coin. You could go shopping. I want to go shopping. <laughs> oh, please, can I go shopping? Yeah. What do you want to buy? Um, <laughs> How much are things? Okay, so poisons uh, have, are like between ten and twenty coins, depending uh -huh. on the poison. Poultices, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, two uses of poultices of, and herbs is 10 coins. Okay. Um, three uses of bandages is five coins. Okay. Um, oh, they'll also do you antitoxin as well, which is 10 coins. Um, um, question. Mm -hmm. I have a ruby that is worth 25 coins. Yeah, so you could exchange that for something worth 25 coins or less. Cool. You won't get change. Yep, got it. That's what I figured. Um, in which case, I would like to buy... Um... You could get like a couple of things in exchange, yeah, right? Yeah, so, that's what so, I was thinking. So, like... so you said 10 coins for two uses of poultices and herbs or three yep. uses? Uh, sorry, two uses of poultices and herbs is 10 coins, yes. And poultices and herbs, can you remind me what their mechanical... When you carefully stuff? treat someone's wounds with poultices and herbs, Heal them for seven damage and expend a use, but it is slow. You can't do it quickly. Right, so like at camp or something. Yep. Okay. That sounds really useful. Um, Is that, I'm basically, gonna... you can't use it in com like combat or yeah, like in, combat. in, in yeah, a combat. Yeah, right. It's got to take time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to do... Uh, oh, and how much is pipe leaf? Uh, it is five coins for six uses. Ooh. All right. All right, then. And what was the other thing that was 10 coins that you listed there? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Antitoxin? Antitoxin. How many uses? One. One use. All right. I will buy one use of antitoxin, mm -hmm. uh, two uses of poultices and herbs, mm -hmm. and six uses of pipe leaf. Great. Good job. Um, I, think, uh, I think all of those are zero weight. Yeah, they are. Nice. That is even better. Cool. Well, um, does anyone want to do rumor searching in town, or do we want to like go through the list of rumors that we already have, or what's what's the feel, fam? I'd I'd love to hear the rumors that we already have, and maybe then search for more rumors. Does anyone want to read us out the list of what we currently currently have written down? Um, just quickly before that, mm -hmm. I'd like to return Andre's magic skull um, and buy one use of antitoxin, please. Yeah, sure. You can do that. So just mark off the 10 coins and take that. Um, and yeah, it, um, did you have the magic skull listed in your inventory? Yep. I picked it up um, last session after the lizard folk tried to nick it. Yep. Cool. Um... Actually, I'm changing my mind. I'm rather than the antitoxin, I'm actually going to get four four lots of uh, poultices and herbs. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, all right. Cool. I can help you out with antitoxin if you need. Cool. 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 All right. So, um, does someone want to do some reading for us? I'm happy to do that. Sure. Um, Okay. Rumors, 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 rumors. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, as always, there is trouble with the Chitons. The Chitons are, are like a race of, um, or the group is a little unclear how they, how they happen. We've, there's some stuff that we've seen with like things that are dead maybe turning into chitons but they're kind of like a spider spider people basically 
um, and there is a, a group of them that live nearby in the forest who um, haven't caused active trouble for town recently that we've seen on camera, but they are very, uh, tend to be very aggressive and they like to prey on townsfolk. Um, uh, there are some lizard folk who live a little way uh, out on the salt flats uh, and they have like a gigantic mm, tank crawly machine thing and some dirt bikes. Um, uh, we've seen a little bit and heard a little bit about a um, mysterious figure uh, called Apsis, um, Emperor of All Between the Standing Stone and the Sapphire Sea who appears to be dead but not dead um he yes he he's he is there is something very strange about atsus and he sometimes turns up and sometimes he can kind of be called um we know that he is searching for his lost castle there's a ruin of his castle somewhere in the forest um and no one knows where it is, including him. Um, blah, blah, blah. His body is in town, isn't it? His body is also in town. He appears to kind of have two bodies. It's complicated if uh, anyone wants Except to know. That the one he's in sometimes turns to ash. Or yep. Yes, he ash. sheds ash when he walks. Yeah. yeah. There's a whole lot of weird stuff about Atsis. <clears throat> he's very mysterious. We don't really know what's going on there. Um, there is an area nearby uh, where the course of a river shifted um, to reveal a like a battle site, basically, where there are um, many old bones. Uh, <laughs> it has been rather eloquently uh, dubbed the Bone Zone. Uh, and we have been there a couple of times, and it's always very mysterious. Um, by the Well of Eels, there is a man who wears a shell like a tortoise and offers wisdom in return for food. His name is Dendron. Um, on the way to the bone zone, there is a chasm. And down the bottom of the chasm, there are some magic doors where an elf lives. We've met at least one inhabitant of this place. Uh, the elf seems to be maybe very, maybe very old, maybe undead. Um, Apparently, there's, there's room here that just says an ogre walked past town carrying an alive goat and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> that was a thing that happened at one point, yes. Yep. Uh, there was some trouble with the guinea pigs that someone in town was keeping. Uh, they seemed to, like, they had, some of them had been stolen by some kind of large bird or something. Um, uh, there's a massive city a little way away from town, which seems largely unpopulated, uh, but is currently being held by a faction called the Ghouls. Uh, it's a very fancy looking city and we don't know much about it other than that. Uh, there is a campsite uh, near-ish called the Hungry Wave, which is apparently a very safe and uh, interesting campsite. Um, there are rumours about an eighth warden. Uh, I don't know how familiar Jane is with the Pantheon, but generally speaking, most people only know of seven wardens. So that is a slightly mysterious something. Uh, that was a thing that Atsis knew about. Um, there's a big serpent living in the forest nearby who accepts gifts. Um, Oh, wow, I don't know anything about this one. It says, there is a section of river which appears like it's boiling or roiling or white water, and it creates a menthol-scented mist um, during the night, which makes people dizzy. Ooh. Um, there's been someone laying traps in the surrounding forest of Beta, which have been killing villagers. Um, it says, the traps belong to... And then it doesn't say anything else, so... It goes on to the next bullet point. Sorry. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, okay, the next bullet point is, about a day and a half from town, there is a shipping container suspended in a large tree by a lizard slash crocodile slash alligator folk. 
uh, which is used as a base by said lizard slash crocodile slash alligator folk who also have dirt bikes. So they're the ones that have been uh, laying traps for people. Cool. That is the rumors. <laughs> it's quite a list now. Yep. So a whole range of stuff. Anything that caught anyone's ear? Hmm. That is a whole range of stuff. Certainly not a shortage. Um, one of the things is that you can be like, I, I want to go looking for rumors related to such and such to get more information mm -hmm. about things as well if you want to. Um, oh, yeah. You I'm interested like. in this river. That does sound The menthol-scented one. The, men the menthol-scented river. Mm. Yeah. I, Have any yeah. of us... Um, I was there last time. You were there last time? Yes. Okay. We went up into the trees. Right. To not be dizzy anymore and just ended up camping there because we're like, you know what? This just we're we're tired. <laughs> we'll mm. stay here for today. Hmm. Okay. So we don't know anything there was nothing else about it other than other than what's written there? Okay. Well that does sound interesting. I'm mm -hmm. very happy to go and investigate that. I mean yeah, you can just sit out and go and look at it if you want. That's um... it would be I mean it might be worth asking about like looking for rumors about that in case there mm. in case anyone knows like a connection to something else or what might be caused yeah. something. I was like, it's super interesting but if we just go look at it and get dizzy <laughs> we're not gonna find out anything about why it's there or it's true we might be able to find out some information about it it might be uh, helpful or it <laughs> might be damaging it, it, knowing more information about it is a good thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could bottle some of the mist. <gasps> Maybe we could. And use it to make other people dizzy when we don't want them to think clearly. <laughs> that sounds like a good thing for the apothecary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could take some back to the apothecary. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yeah, that's do you so yeah, do you want to go and search for is someone searching for rumors about the 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 mist of the river? Is that the plan? Mm -hmm. Does anyone have decent uh charisma? Because mine uh, is awful. I I do. Excellent. I only okay. recently managed to get it to zero, <laughs> negative one. So I think that right. tells you what my charisma is like. Oh, well, maybe Air can help us with <laughs> talking to people. I absolutely could. Um, yeah, go prospecting oh, yeah, for rumors. I'm confused. I thought that my cool. So you could yeah. um, you could help if you want, Sarah. You could offer that's help. Another, that's another, yeah. that's really good, yeah. I would like to do that. You'd like to help? Cool. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, then, if... um, uh, if... I can help with, um, like, it's over in this area, because that's the way we went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Yep. Um, so you're getting uh, help from two people, so that means that you have two dice re-rolls if you want. So the way that helping work is, works... Um, actually, you know what, what we'll do? The, the, we'll do the roll, and then we'll do the, the helping thing. So, Jane, um, do you want to spend... Uh, actually, all right. When you roll a thing, you roll 2d6 plus your stat. Um, so in this case, mm -hmm. it's going to be 2d6 plus your car the CHA uh -huh. um, and then if someone is helping if one person is helping you you're allowed to re-roll one of those dice if two people are helping you then you're allowed to do that two times um, and uh -huh. then um, and then for this one specifically if you want to spend a coin to get an extra plus one on top of your car bonus you can do that as well so okay did you want to spend a coin to you don't have any coin I remember this um i don't have any coin no, so no. Sorry. so I'll, I'll just use my plus one car and roll three times yep so yeah so you so, so you roll 2d6 plus cha um or, or you can just use the button oh that's true you can press the button on your, on your character, character sheet um if you mouse over where it says oh right yeah it's over the actual uh you yeah. can just you can just press the the the, the big circular bit yep cool Awesome. And then you do you want to re-roll one of those? Uh yes. I think that's not a very good roll. So <laughs> So do you want to re-roll the so you want to re-roll the one? Uh yes. Oh, can I be selective about which one I re-roll? So the the way it works is that you can re-roll one of the dice from your 2d6, but you can do that two times. Okay. 
awesome. Um, so, so I roll. Help you because you get two people's help from. So this time you just type slash roll one d six because you're just free rolling one of them. And do I go plus one? Uh, no, we'll we'll do that math ourselves. Okay. So that makes it an eleven. Yep. Ooh, nice. Do you want to re-roll any of those a second time, or do you want to leave it as an eleven? Hint. No, don't. I think I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> All right. <okay. laughs> um, great. So finding out. Um, so on a ten plus um, of gathering rumors, you hear tall tales told firsthand. The GM will give you a reliable rumor. Um, so I think. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you're going around being like, does anyone know about this weird like mist that comes off the river at this weird point? And um, and one of the like early like young teens in the village, they're probably like twelve, thirteen. Their name is Bombs, um, and they um, uh, and they they're like, yeah, I can go, uh, I can go far like five whole minutes and uh, and not uh, and not get knocked out if you can get the whole way to the river then there are fish just jumping out and they're weird fish i haven't seen those in the in other parts of the river cool um and cool. yeah everyone else is like everyone else, uh, everyone else is like uh, all the other like kids are like yeah yeah he bought one back once it was weird it had a, a, an eye in its mouth Ooh. Okay, I'm definitely, definitely up for going to that. That sounds fun. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, so we need to appoint a a leader to help us never to get us to get us there. Yeah. yeah. Well, someone needs to. Someone needs to be the person who rolls the dice, basically. Um, I wonder if maybe Fallen would do that, considering that they've been there before. That does make sense. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right, so when you lead your party through the wilds with a destination in mind, name what you're looking for, adventure, treasure, the hidden grove of the Elder Blood Tree, and ask the GM how much progress you'll need. Dear GM, we would like to go to the Frothing River. Uh, how much progress will we need? You will need two progress to get to the Frothing Bend in the river. We... Um, okay. And then I have at least a plus one. <laughs> so yeah, if you have a map, uh, roll uh, add your plus int. Um, the, I don't I don't think anyone's got the that river bend marked on them on the map yet. If you have only mm -hmm. folklore and uh, and hearsay to guide you, add plus one. If you've been there before, add plus one. So you're adding. You're only adding plus one. No, you're adding plus two because you've got folklore and hearsay, and you've got and you've been there before. So. Good job. Um, so that's 2d6 plus 2, Poland. 9? It's not bad. Um, on a 7 to 9, choose 1. Make a discovery, but no progress. Ask the GM what you find, or make a progress, but only if you overcome a danger first. Are we feeling dangerous, folks? Or would we like to make an interesting discovery? I'm kind of keen on an interesting discovery, personally. Yeah. I mean, I've always got to be up for those. Sean says knowledge is great. Yes. Cool. All right. Let me have a look and see what I've got for you. Um... It makes sense, considering, like, the last time they tried to get to the, the trap place, they kind of got a bit sidetracked and lost. So not really being able to go straight there. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, you find. Um. As you travel, you enter into an uh, into a part of the uh, of the forest that is, um, very very dense foliage in the canopy. Um, in the uh in the uh undergrowth here, it never really gets more than like twilight. Um, and uh, and as you're traveling through, um, you think you spot ahead of you a, a, a pair of like 
a, a lamp or maybe a pair of lamps up in the trees ahead. Um, I think you. Uh, I think here there are um, there are a bunch of great banyan trees that are um, that are like clumped together, and you can see that, it, that this light is coming from from some of these uh, one of these trees a little further into the shadows. Um, it like lights up and then it like blinks off and then you know comes back and then blink blinks off a couple of times and then kind of like withdraws in uh, behind something what do you do how large are these lights it's really hard to tell like you're having a real hard time because of because like that that further in is like very very shadowy and it's kind of like a lot of um silhouettes you're having a large time telling if they're like larger and closer or smaller and f or, or further away um but like are they are they like firefly size lights no, or are they've they got like, i mean they've like, got to at least like be a lantern the, thing. they've got to be at least the size of your uh, of like your palm if not the size of your whole hand what's what I, I like we get the sound of like of like multiple pairs of feet in the uh in in the like crunching leaf litter like coming to a stop what do you do i'll probably stop <laughs> just like hold out arms and be like mm -hmm. definitely other people here as mm. the cat walks across my screen <laughs> 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 Definitely other people here, like this cat. Um, so the, the lights are up in the trees, right? Not anymore. Oh, they've it, gone out. It, it, with, yeah. it withdrew. It definitely like moved behind something. Um, it didn't seem to cast a lot of light around it. It was um, like a, a very golden light, but not radiant. When you say they blinked out, did they like blink out blink out or like it just stopped like st it's like seemed... a pair of eyes or like yeah, maybe like a pair of eyes or maybe like it was turning away from you like if someone was doing like this right with a it might have that would have been the same effect okay well they clearly i'll whisper like they they clearly know we're here so does someone want to try talking to them? Um, I think like I think Bao uh, is yeah like like staring up curiously at like the point where the lights were, uh, and when you say that, uh, I think uh, Bao says, um, mm, "I'll talk to them." Um, but I think like any, anyone who knows who knows Bao or has uh, spent time with Bao before knows that that's. That, Probably not the best idea, uh, but she's she's enthusiastic about it. Bao, you can see that in that distant tree where the lights were. I think you can see that there are not tree. There are some in the tree. There are some silhouette shapes that are not tree shapes. In the tree. Mm. Mm -hmm. Up among it, some people or something. Uh, hey, some kind of like. Um, so this is probably, it's probably like a hundred, 150 meters, like deeper into the forest. Um, um, so it's like, it, it's like, oh, probably, probably a hundred meters, um, d deeper into the forest. So yeah, um, it, it, you're like, they're, they're kind of, yeah, very artificial shapes, you know, hard corners and things. Is is sketch just yelling into the forest? Is that is that the plan? Yeah, it's like, hey, people who came out the tree. <laughs> There's a the the like what you the, doing? that light uh, the light like um like lazily, it's definitely one this time like lazily kind of illuminates and then just uh, and like and and like casts a little bit more in your direction before before going out again. Um, you, it's definitely, um, that's what I'm looking for. The light is, uh, the light is, um, a golden circle that is ribbed, like, uh, like 
rippled glass. Um, and it has like a central, and, and I think it has like a spot in the middle of it, of like darkness. Like a pupil? <laughs> Maybe like a pupil. Mm. This is like big... And yeah, at this, at this distance, it's, it's at least the size of your, uh, of your, like your, your hand out wide. We're trying to find a weird river. <laughs> I think we're lost. We're not here to attack anyone or anything. Just, just getting that out there. A moth flies into your face. They cough and splutter very ungracefully and kind of flail a little bit. I would like to uh, approach cautiously and try to kind of like get maybe under the tree a little bit and like get another angle on these um, shadows and like uh, try to understand them better. That sounds like you're descending realities. Mm hmm. All right, I will do that then. Wisdom. So, Jane, for your benefit, there are, um, uh, in the document, there are a bunch of basic moves, which are moves that everyone has access to. So that's hack and slash, okay. volley, spout law, discern realities, defy danger, parley, express, aid another, and move together. And they're just like the ones that everyone can always do. Um, by triggering yep. the fiction, um, and they they have their own. Uh, so that's all listed in there. But like, we'll tell you if it, or we, or we can easily tell you if you're triggering one by your fiction. <laughs> Emily, that's a six. It is. I think I still get to ask. You still get to ask your one question. I think. What's well, the... no, I thought it was. Um, let me double check. I thought the case. I thought the answer was that you. Uh, no, no, no a, you're right. Yeah. It's just my special one. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask my special one. What do the spirits whisper here? Um, the spirits whisper. Now, you, you, the spirits for, for Bao are like, are, are like kind of the spirits of the like dead things. It tends to be, doesn't it? Yeah. More so than more spirits so the, though the, than like ghosts and stuff. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. Um. They whisper a trick, a disguise, dress-ups. Put, f um, paint your face and become someone new. I mean, I can do that. <laughs> um, they're, they're saying that's what's here. Yeah. No, I, I get that. Um, I think, uh... Um, I assume that a bad thing is going to happen to me because I rolled a six. Um, but I think in the meantime, I would like to use my, uh, I would like to respond to this by using my, um, so I'm looking for background ability, heritage ability. So what do you do? I'm going to put on someone else's face. I'm going to put on, uh, I think I'm going to put it on my friend Sparrow's face. Um, so this is a, this is a situation where like, I think Bao like, uh, yeah, like kind of moves her hands over the mask that she's wearing. Um, just sort of like once, uh, and then like lifts it up so that it sits up on sort of at the top of her hair. Uh, and when she lifts it up, uh, yeah, she has the face of, of someone else, the face of Sparrow. Um, it's going to be super creepy because like Fallen t has gone adventuring with Sparrow before, so they're going to be like, yeah. So you, yeah, you are very tempted to look like Bao now because that would be yeah. confusing and hilarious. Um, and I think she does this quite like openly. Uh, and she specifically, like when she lifts up the, the mask uh, to show the, the different face, she does so like to the tree and kind of puts both hands out, you know, like a ta da <laughs> motion. <laughs> um, and then she's going to wait and see if there's a response. And if not, she's probably going to put on a different face and just kind of do that until something happens. Yeah, yeah. You notice that your back is warm. Everyone else notices that two of these 
lights one above the other have like opened up behind bow and that's where we'll go to our first break 